I've made a lot of videos ranting on chargers lately, and you want to know something? I've made so many to the point where I basically probably convinced you that electric vehicles are not the future because we can't figure out how to charge the dang things. So today I am going to redeem myself and explain to you my ideal charging station that I would love to roll up in. Some charge point operators have actually figured out how to do this, and like there are some examples where they do it properly. Like for example, Tesla right here, it's not the exact exact way I would personally do it, but they're not far off. And Electrify America, they don't have many of them, but they do have one setup that I've seen that actually is perfect. I just wish the chargers there worked. So you know what? Let's dive into detail and explain what would be the ideal charging station to roll up at, including like the charging experience using the chargers themselves. Let's talk about it. <music> All right, so I'm going to quickly sum up how it all should be laid out, for example, because yes, layout is an important thing. Here's how it should be all laid out. And actually it's going to seem a bit boring to you, but there's a reason why a lot of gas stations are set up this way. Yes, I said gas stations. There's a reason why they're set up this way. Pull-throughs. This example of a supercharger I have here on screen is a pull-through example. Now it's not perfect because all it takes is, well, uh, one car being in front and then the car behind that's done charging. Well, they can't necessarily pull through exactly, but but it's way better than other layouts. EA, however, their Baker California site actually is the perfect example of a pull-through charging site. The chargers are spaced out just like gas pumps are, so because of that, yeah, it's the ideal pull-through situation. Baker California has the best Electrify America layout that I have ever seen, and well, also the best supercharger layout as well, except they put posts in the way, so actually some of the stalls you still have to back in because they put posts in between them. But yeah, pull-through, it matters. Matters. Why? Because some people suck at backing in. I've seen a lot of terrible parking jobs with people trying to back in. I myself suck at backing in considering that I have zero depth perception. And considering that new Teslas have lost the ability to have ultrasonic sensors so you can actually get an idea of how close you are to objects when backing up. <sighs> yeah, that's not very helpful. So they should be pull-throughs, not just for the ease of, okay, I got to figure out a back end, oh, how close am I? But also, maybe you have a trailer or something. Yeah, some people tow with Teslas, the Model X, the Model Y, tow with those. And towing with the trailer is not convenient when you have to unhitch it and back in. So pull-through setups there really are the best. And I don't really see that many gas stations, not any pull-through setup. So if pull-through is clearly better, like even our gas stations are laid out this way, why does nobody ever set the chargers up this way? It's actually because I'm willing to bet when they were originally setting up the chargers, they all probably thought electric cars aren't going to take off. So if they're not going to take off, why should we bother to invest the actual proper money in a great charging experience? Instead, no, we're going to put these in the backs of parking lots to the point where you have to back into them and there's no shade or cover like, oh yeah, gas stations. I actually have yet to see a gas station that isn't covered. I'm dead serious. I don't know a gas station that is not covered. And yet the majority of charging stations out there, and I thought that electricity does not really like water. Yep, um, those charging stations, they're not covered. And yeah, it's not particularly fun when it's raining and you have to go out in the rain to plug your car in when all the gas stations, they have covers like this. Some electric car charging stations have covers, like for example, this supercharger I have on screen, and actually a handful of EA stations have cover as well. But a brilliant thing that they do with that cover to help offset the sheer demand demand of electricity they're pulling from the grid, they have solar panels over it. Now, yeah, that's not particularly useful in the rain, but hey, having a cover over your charging stations gives you a lot of benefits. First of all, it shades them, so that means uh, they don't get as hot baking in the sun. So yeah, that shade is very appreciated. It also prevents them from getting wet because we all know how electricity loves to mix with water. It also allows the drivers to not get wet because, well, there's a roof over your head when it's raining. I'm pretty sure drivers would really appreciate that. I guess all of us gas car owners took cover over the gas stations for granted, to be honest, because, wow, it's really sad to see how few charging stations actually have cover over them. But they're also being smart and putting solar panels over it, so that way when it's sunny, they can generate extra electricity, help offset the amount of electrical demand on the grid, because, geez, they pull a lot of energy from the grid. So yeah, in terms of layout, that's really the best layout, in my opinion. You gotta have pull-through with cover. It, gas stations have executed this properly. There's a reason why whenever a new gas station 
is set up, they always put the cover over it. So why can't we do the same with charging stations? Electric cars are taking off like you wouldn't believe. And there's so many advantages to having a cover. So yeah, the biggest things about charging stations, they need to be pulled through. So that way you don't have to figure out, oh, back up, back up. Am I too close to that? Am I going to hit it? Am I going to hit it? And they are way more trailer friendly. So yeah, pull through, cover, exact same layout as a gas station. So what about the stalls themselves? Because this is the ideal charging station. Layout's only a part of it. Well, in terms of the actual charging hardware itself, it should be able to output more than 200 kilowatts. If it cannot output more than 200 kilowatts, then don't even bother installing it. I'm dead serious. If you're not going to put a charger in that can't output 200 kilowatts, then just install an AC charger because it's way cheaper. It's way more cost effective. It's way more reliable, which means you can keep them up for your customers. You don't have to worry about it breaking all the time. If you're really going to put in a charger that can't deliver 200 kilowatts, then just put in an AC charger. It's not worth investing in a way more expensive 50 kilowatt charger, for example. You're not being smart if you do it that way. So the chargers have to be able to output at least 200 kilowatts, at least. If you can't do more than that, then don't bother. And then other details that I need to know, payment methods. I am so sick and tired of how the charging industry is handling the payment methods for charging your car. Why is that? Okay, well, Tesla, they actually have a so figured out, just so beautifully, like you can't actually complain. You just plug in the car and it handles payment method like that. Plug and charge. Why can't we have it that simple actually? Teslas have plug and charge, it's amazing. A handful of other CCS vehicles have plug and charge with a handful of charge point operators, but not that many. Plug and charge is not typically found. So because of that, it, you're resorted to having to use third party apps. You have to give more people your email, your password, birth date, useless information that they genuinely do not need. That's how you have to activate a lot of charging stations. That's how you have to activate the local charge point chargers that just went online a couple weeks ago. You have to have the app. You don't have the app, you can't activate the charger. And that sucks. Nobody likes to have to download another app or maybe a charger that they don't even visit that often. Say they're on a road trip, for example. You don't always visit the same exact chargers every single time. Some of them offer a credit card reader, although EVGhost signet units, I don't know how they manage to do this, but they place the card reader in such a poor spot that you actually can't insert the card. So yeah, what's the point of having a card reader then? So in my opinion, screw the app. Just screw the app, except to let you know if the chargers are online or not, because evidently uh, due to charger reliability, it's that bad to the point where we actually need apps to tell us whether they're working or not. Versus gas stations where you pretty much pull up and you always can fuel unless uh, it's my gas station that ran out of fuel and you have to go down to the other gas station, which takes at least 20 minutes to get a gallon in the tank because they were so low on fuel. Yeah, everyone, that's why I uploaded that short. It's because that gas station I went to was actually all out of fuel. And then the other gas station, oh yeah, which also robbed $85 from me, not cool, Shell. They were actually so low on fuel that it was taking forever to pump their tanks. That's why I made the short. So yeah, if, there's, if you're going to have an app downloaded on the phone, then just have that app so that way you can know whether the chargers are online or not, because evidently we need some way to know that they're online or not. But in terms of payment methods, no, screw the app. You should either do it via a credit card like we've been doing with gas stations the entire time, or because, hey, we're working with electrons here and electrons can also carry data, for example, plug and charge. Tesla nailed it. It's awesome. It's amazing. Why can't we just have plug and charge? And then the last thing that should be on all the charging stations? The NAX connector. I actually kid you not. They should all have the NAX connector, just like every other vehicle. Every vehicle should have the NAX connector. Why? Because the CCS is, well, worse than the NAX connector in quite literally every single way. I made a video discussing this already, and yet you cannot argue with me. The NAX connector is clearly superior to CCS. So yeah, the ideal charging station is pull-through design with a cover shade. Hey, maybe throw some solar panels on top while you're at it. The chargers can deliver at least two 200 kilowatts. Payment method is done via plug and charge or your credit card. No need to create another email and password and share all sorts of private information with people that do not need it. And then you plug in via the superior charging standard, the NAX connector. That would be the ideal charging situation. And wait a sec, did I just describe a handful of Tesla superchargers out there like uh, this one? Just goes to say, yeah, Tesla just figured it out. And even though, yeah, some supercharger stalls, they go down every now and then, Tesla is the best at sending technicians out there and getting them up and running right away. 
So yeah, that's why I keep saying they figured it out. I just showed you the ideal charging design. Pull through, shaded, throw solar panels on top while you're at it. Why not? Plug and charge payment method or credit card reader. Okay, yeah, Tesla Supercharger doesn't actually have a credit card reader, but that's because plug and charge is so amazing to the point where you actually don't even need it. It's like redundant at that point. And using the superior charging standard that can handle basically way more power than CCS ever could. So yeah, Tesla got to figure out. What say you, charge point operators? Are you going to invest the proper amount of money to actually create Create charging stations for the public? Or are you going to continue to just shove them in the back of Walmarts and be as terrible and crappy as you currently are? Just asking. All right. Thank you for watching. Do me a favor and interact with the stuff below. My name is Alpha Duol. Grand name Alpha. Signing off.